everybody who has joined uh, our training tonight on do-it-yourself cleaning products. I'm thrilled to have you all here and uh, anxious to get going on what is a very fun and light uh, and yet really relevant and helpful topic, I think. So I'm going to jump right into it. Just a very quick introduction. My name is Talia Charney. I'm a holistic nutrition and wellness coach. I'm also the nutrition and health education manager for the Now Health Group. And I have a very eclectic background in health, uh, in herbal medicine, and homeopathy and essential oils and so on. I've dabbled in a lot of things over the years. And uh, most importantly, when I speak of my training values are honesty, objectivity, nuance and humility. I would be remiss if I didn't thank both of our sponsors tonight. So one of them, of course, is Healthy Planet, uh, where you registered. And uh, hopefully you'll be able to go back to them after this talk and talk to their uh, great uh, staff that's very informed uh, and get some help uh, getting your DIY cleaning going. I also just wanted to uh, say a few things about uh, our other sponsor now. So um, now is a family owned company for 53 years now. That's how long we've been going. And the Stelwood Richard here is, uh, is the founder. And if you really want to know about now, which is a, a very touching and incredible story and a testament to a, a great uh, company and values, you can actually go to um, the now website. And I, I think I, I did give our um, moderator, Elizabeth, who I so I forgot to, to introduce. So she's going to be looking at your questions and helping out tonight in, in the chat area. Um, so uh, she probably has the link to this book, which you can actually download. It's a really great uh, story. Uh, also, having said that, let me just mention that if you have questions, which we'll get to at the end, please write your questions in the question and answer section versus in the chat group where you can chat with one another and you can chat with Elizabeth, but put the questions in that uh, separate area. And as one other thing, as part of the now family, we're actually a big family. There's the, the core family that you've seen, uh, but also there are many other people as part of the now family, including 200 scientists who are deeply involved in the quality control that now does, which is incredible. Uh, they're well known for that. They set the bar really high. Uh, they have eight in-house laboratories. They do 96 quality checks and tests on every product, at least as a, as a minimum on every ingredient in every product, and about 16,000 separate analyses on a monthly basis. So let me jump into our DIY cleaning. So what I like to cover tonight is the, what I call the C of cleaning. You want your cleaning to be safe, to be environmentally sustainable, that's very important uh, to be effective, of course, and also economical. Uh, and I make all of my own cleaning products. Um, so there is nothing really remaining that I, that I purchase other than the raw ingredients and love to share it with you. Of course, uh, safety is important when it comes to cleaning. This is uh, a news article just from last year in 2020 a lot of people were using strong disinfectants and cleaning products because of COVID-19. And because of that, just as a testament to, you know, that there's a lot of chemicals uh, going into cleaning products, there was a 58% increase in poisoning from bleaches and disinfectants and such. So, you know, these are not benign products. And one of the best places to go, if you want to look at existing products you have to see you know, where they stand in terms of how safe they are or not. The Environmental Working Group has a great website and they rate different products. So in this case, they gave an F grade, which is the lowest to, or um, well, they give them to many products that you would be familiar with uh, in terms of their names, Lysol, Easy Off and so on. This is just one example in terms of kitchen cleaning products. And those ratings are based on different things uh, in terms of that they're linked to health effects such as asthma or respiratory problems, skin allergies, and so on. So that's a great website. 
Um, again, you can go search a single product. They'll give you the rating and they'll explain the breakdown of different ingredients as well. And ideally what you want is for everything you're using to be an A grade, such as you see here with Dr. Broner's, which is included in tonight's talk. So most of what I'm gonna be talking about tonight is cleaning, not so much sanitizing or disinfecting, but I just wanted to define that quickly because, um, because of unusual circumstances, you know, the elephant in the room, a lot of people have been doing disinfecting or sanitizing, but under normal circumstances, for the most part in our homes, we're just doing cleaning. We're mechanically removing visible soil with soap and detergents. We don't need to, under regular circumstances, disinfect and kill all microorganisms. That's something that's done in hospitals or even sanitizing is something usually, you know, done in restaurants. We may do some sanitizing. For example, if you, you know, if you spill something like a, um, uh, chicken liquid from a chicken or something that you're preparing in your kitchen, of course, then you have to sanitize the area. But typically we're just cleaning and that's what we need. So what kind of supplies do you need? I'm gonna go through all the supplies that you need, but it does help to have some spray bottles when you're making your own stuff. It doesn't have to be the one I'm showing you there, although I do like these glass bottles, but you can upcycle old bottles from products you already have. The most important thing is it's comfortable in your hand and the spray, you know, it works well. That, that's really what matters. It doesn't have to be glass when you're upcycling it. Old toothbrushes are really helpful to get in little crevices. You wanna have gloves just to protect your hands because even natural things can be corrosive to your hands and, uh, or irritating like vinegar. Um, something to carry your supplies around makes it easier. And uh, the reason I showed a squeegee, which seems kind of maybe out of there is because one of the hardest things to, to deal with is mold. So the best thing to do is prevent it. And a squeegee is great after you've showered. Um, and I didn't want to say too, I didn't say at the beginning, but um, my experience of making my own products is that I was never a person who liked cleaning. That's definitely not something that was characteristic of me. But once I made my own products, there's something about do it yourself. When you make your own product, uh, brings a kind of pleasure that you just don't get from something that you buy. And so it even inspired in me a sort of a like for cleaning. And uh, if you get other people involved in your household, maybe in making these things, you can get them enthusiastic about helping with the cleaning. I love these natural fiber cloths. Of course, you do need cloths. Hopefully natural fibers would be better. And uh, these Mabu cloths, um, are wonderful because they don't hold on to a sort of smell that you get from when there's bacteria in your cloth. So they are tested to be bacterial resistant. And I use them actually as face cloths as well. I have many of them around. Three general important cleaning tips. The first one, uh, the same, this is the same thing you say in alternative medicine um, when it comes to how do you treat something. It's first do no harm. That means Take the gentlest approach you need first. We don't need to, you know, use a hammer. Like uh, when for for most cleaning, if you if you keep things up, you just need gentle products. Um, second is dwell time. Uh, that means leaving things to sit. So if you spray something on the counter, let it sit for a few minutes or longer. The longer it sits the better it's gonna clean when then you go wipe it up. And that's going to make natural products work better just by the fact that you left them sitting there. And secondly, even if you're trying to disinfect an area, part of how well a disinfectant works is not just how strong it is, the ingredients in it, but how long you leave them sitting. So dwell time is something like just a little patience can go a long way for more effectiveness. And lastly, spot test, because I don't know what all of your different uh, you know, uh, surfaces are, we have, um, you know, so with any cleaning product, if you've never used it before, and this is just soap and water, uh, test a spot so that you don't ruin something. Now, the ingredients that uh, we're going to be working with, and you really, you don't need all of these, but I'm going to cover all of them. You can clean most of your house with, you know, three or four of these. Um, these are the things that you're going to put together to make your own products. And I've divided them just for interest into ingredients that are more alkaline and ingredients that are more acidic, 
and then there are those that are in the middle. And these kind of give them their chemical properties that explain how they work. Something very acidic can help break things down. Works because it's acidic, but the same, same thing goes with, uh, with uh, alkalinity. So I'm going to go through each of these and then get to the recipes at the end, starting with the alkaline ingredients, just to have a, so a little uh, order. So let's start with the alkaline cleaners. So Castile soap is something that I use a lot. Dr. Broner's is a, a very well-known brand that makes liquid Castile soaps. Uh, it's key really for all purpose cleaners. You wanna have a nice, it's a very gentle soap. Uh, it can come in a liquid form or in a dry flake form. Um, so the liquid soap, the original recipe, it comes from a, an area, um, Castile uh, from Spain. And the original recipe was olive oil, lye, and water. But today, Castile soap, that word is used to explain any vegetable-based soap. But it's gentle. And so, and it goes a long way again for, it will be in many recipes, especially your all-purpose cleaners. You can also get Castile soap flakes. So uh, Eco Pioneer makes it, just kind of like powdery flakes. One thing I love to do with the soap flakes is that you can actually make your own liquid soap, which is a lot of fun. You just need those dry soap flakes and vegetable glycerin. And, uh, and here are the recipes. Now, I, I or Elizabeth is going to share at the end of this talk with you all the links that I have at the bottom of these slides here. So I have a link to a YouTube video that's going to show you how to make this recipe. So you'll get all of those. You can flash a picture with your camera if you want for the recipes, but you, of course, will be able to go back and listen to this um, training on, on YouTube to see the recipes again, but you also will have access to go straight to those particular videos. So I won't read through all the recipes. Then uh, other alkaline ingredients that will come in handy are baking soda and washing soda, kind of two essentials for me. Now they sound very similar, baking soda and washing soda. They actually are because baking soda is sodium bicarbonate and washing soda is sodium carbonate. So they're very close. Because of that, it really can use, be used very interchangeably, but Washing soda is a little bit stronger. It has a little bit of a higher pH. So they're usually used for some you know, different purposes, even though they're similar. They can both deodorize, both be used uh, in washing as a brightener, both be used in laundry. But on the whole, baking soda is usually used um, for household cleaning, which I'm going to show you, like to make a, a brace of powder. And maybe for gentle laundering, it's a bit more gentle. And washing soda, as the name applies, is mostly used for laundry. There are endless uses for baking soda. So I'm not gonna lie, <laughs> I won't cover them all though. But as a deodorizer is one of them, of course you might have a, a box of it in your refrigerator. You generally sprinkle the baking soda, leave it somewhere and then vacuum or sweep it away to deodorize the area. So there's many different uses, but also it's great to make a mild abrasive paste to replace all those products that are powdery that you're using in your house uh, to sort of scrub without the chemicals. So um, a simple abrasive paste is just liquid soap mixed with baking soda and some essential oils. Um, and you can make a, a sort of paste out of it and, and leave it. So again, when I say leave something, that's that important dwelling time. Washing soda, as I said, is like baking soda, but maybe a bit stronger, usually used to make a natural laundry detergent. I'll get to that recipe uh, in the second part of this talk, but it whitens, brightens, deodorizes and softens. Certainly has other uses as well. Um, it's used in uh, swimming pools, it could be used to clean a mossy paths or patios, it can also be used as a deodorizer, like baking soda, and even for some more uh, tough stains. You'll find, uh, if you search lots of recipes with washing soda in it. So next there's borax. Borax is a little bit more of a mystery to me. 
Um, it is sourced from a natural mineral deposit. So it's, it's a type of mineral. It's, it's mostly just composed of sodium, which is salt and boron. And um, when you put it in water, it releases hydrogen peroxide. Hydrogen peroxide, you're probably familiar with, is what people use to whiten their teeth. So it's a mild bleaching agent, natural deodorizer, um, and it has some other properties as well that make it suitable and helpful for uh, an ingredient in a cleaning product. Oops. So borax is also, I guess, most well known in the last few years for making slime. Well, that's not the purpose of tonight's talk, but just thought I would uh, mention that. Got a whole bunch of other uses, many of these is which I've never used it for, but uh, borax may be helpful as a weed killer uh, to kill insects and pests. And again, I've got a good link here that will give you um, a lot of details, 33 uses for borax so you can learn um, other uses. Once you get these ingredients, if you put them to full use, you'll find that they go a long way. Next is bleach. So this is something else I also use. Now this is kind of the conventional chlorine bleach, which I do not use. It is obviously harmful if ingested. Um, ironically, although it is known and thought to, to whiten clothes, which it does, it also, if you have a white shirt like I do, it removes these optical whiteners that are on our clothing um, and then makes them look less white over time. It also can be very dangerous because of the chlorine in it when mixed with vinegar or ammonia. Uh, so that's something important to remember. It's because of the chlorine in it. So a great alternative is what's called oxygen bleach. This does not have the chlorine in it and it's definitely a safer option. Um, so oxygen bleach, the, the chemical name is sodium percarbonate. And when you take this oxygen bleach and you add it into water, you wanna put it in hot water, it releases hydrogen peroxide. So again, hydrogen peroxide, which is of course what we use to bleach our teeth. So it's going to be uh, have that um, whitening property. And it also releases washing soda, which I've already talked about. So a lot of these, you can see they're very chemically similar, one turns into the other. So the hydrogen peroxide releases oxygen and it bubbles up and it helps to lift the stains. So, so bleach is a great add-on to whatever washing detergent you're already using, even the natural one that you make, when you want a little more oomph to whiten your whites and brighten your uh, bright colors. And so, yeah, this is exactly what it's mostly gonna be used for. But again, and you'll see on this video, there are many other interesting uses for oxygen bleach other than just your laundry, but good to start with trying it out for one thing, and then you can uh, expand. So with oxygen bleach, you wanna dissolve it in hot water to mix it properly. Um, somebody asked me on a recent training, well, what if I wash my clothes with cold water, which is a good thing, because that's, you know, it's more eco-friendly. You can just mix the oxygen bleach into some hot water and then add it in to the machine. So you still can use your cold water. It's only effective when it's wet. So you can't, um, uh, and then it lasts about six hours because it's releasing this oxygen and it's creating a kind of a momentum that's going to lift dirt. So you can't pre-mix oxygen bleach and then use it some days later like you can with some cleaning products. You have to just use it as you know on demand. And so here are some uh, general recipes for laundry, just depending on the size that you're doing. You'll but when you when you buy the oxygen bleach, it will come with instructions on the back or on the website for all the different uses and and load sizes. Then there's the acids. So I've covered the alkalines. You're going to be using acids. Citric acid is something that I uh, like to use in some of my cleaning uh, products. So it does have, of course, a lovely scent. We use uh, citric acid, comes from citrus, and uh, that's the nice scent. It's an excellent degreaser. We know that citrus is helpful for degreasing. If you've ever squeezed some citrus onto a bunch of oil, you'll see that the oil sort of breaks apart. 
um, citric acid or any uh, acid, vinegar or citric acid is helpful to lift mineral deposits. So mineral deposits you'll see on your cutlery when you have spots, on your sink where you have spots, in your kettle where you have the, that buildup, those are mineral deposits, calcium. Um, so if you've got a lot of minerals in your water, which is what we call, um, if you have uh, heavy water, um, then those are mineral deposits and something like citric acid or uh, vinegar can help lift them up or even prevent them from depositing in the first place. Citric acid is also a helpful preservative, not, not uh, this particular one is not for uh, food. Um, and then we also have to be careful though with acids, not to use them on stone or marble or brass. So always be careful when it comes to, you know, the particular instructions that you have for your surfaces. So here's an example of a use for citric acid. Um, I watched a, a great little video that showed how you know, could remove the rust from, uh, and rust of course is mineral deposits um, from something like this. It worked better than vinegar in a little video I watched, but you certainly, if you have something that's rusted, you can soak it in citric acid. One of my favorite and you really unique uses for citric acid, because you can't do this with vinegar, is to make these fizzy toilet, I call them refreshers. If you take these out of the bottle, they are kind of chalky hard. They will crumble if you push them hard enough. But um, what these are is that they're little, um, they don't have to be heart shaped, but they're these little um, things that you can drop into the toilet between your weekly cleans or whenever you clean it to kind of give it a clean in between. Uh, when you drop it in, it's going to start to fizz and bubble a little bit because it's got uh, citric acid and baking soda. When you mix the ac those acid and alkaline, they make a reaction and it fizzes. So these are a lot of fun to make and very easy to make as well. Then there's vinegar. I'm sure everyone has vinegar and uses vinegar. If you go to the store, you'll see regular vinegar and sometimes you'll see cleaning vinegar. So both of these are very similar in terms of how strong they are. Cleaning vinegar is a little bit more acidic, if that makes a difference, but otherwise they can be used interchangeably. Uh, what is different is you can get industrial vinegar, which is 20% acetic acid, that's what I use. So uh, Eco Pioneer and Simply Clean make this five time concentrate. So it's five times stronger than regular vinegar. You can see it says five times there. I have a conversion chart here. So if you're making a recipe and it says use one cup of vinegar, you can instead use three tablespoons of a five time concentrate. And the reason I like the five time concentrate is uh, one, it's less waste in terms of container and size and carrying because you can dilute it when you get home. Uh, but secondly, sometimes you want something more concentrated and you can always dilute it, but you can't go the other way around. So an example of when I want a strong concentrate is once a year or so, I'm going to clean my shower head so it can run better because it's got mineral deposits in it and that can slow it down. Uh, so this is a little trick you put, I put the five time concentrate in a, in a bag and dilute it half with water and leave it there overnight. So this vinegar again is great to suspend minerals so you don't get those alkaline deposits. So for hard water stains, mineral buildup. A good example of this, if you're trying to conceptualize what these mineral deposits is if you think of an old towel, after years, your towel starts to feel kind of, it's not soft, it's almost kind of crunchy. <laughs> um, and that's because whenever you wash it, you have heavy water and the minerals are not being washed out of the towel properly. And so it loses its softness. So using something like vinegar when you're washing may help reduce this. So vinegar, because it lifts minerals, is a alternative to fabric softeners. It's softening the fabrics by preventing those minerals from settling on your clothes. So you can either add it to the rinse cycle, which is the best thing to do. You don't wanna add it during the washing cycle because 
your washing powder most likely is a bit alkaline. And if you add this acid at the same time, it will reduce the effectiveness of the washing. Um, so you wanna add it to the rinse cycle. Um, if you have your own machine and you can open up, you can add it at the end. Couple beginner tips, some sort of miscellaneous interesting things. Firstly, if you're not sure if you have hard water, here's a, an easy test, which is that you just take um, a glass of water and you'd put some Castile soap into the water. If it turns cloudy, as you see here on the left, that's an indication that you have hard water. If it stays clear, or quickly kind of disperses and goes clear, you probably don't have uh, hard water. So that's kind of a rough test. Of course, there's degrees of hardness in the water, but that's a rough test. Um, this is uh, what I call the unsolved mystery. This is a, this is a very popular technique to clean drains, which I'm sure you're probably familiar with, which is to add vinegar and baking soda together it's an acid and an alkaline. And because they react, the acid and alkaline, you get this fizzing and you know it looks great, it's exciting. And people seem to think it cleans their sink. But there's some controversy online as to whether it actually works. The reason being, because if you take an acid and an alkaline and you mix them together and then they fizz, basically what happens is they both lose their activity and they get neutralized and therefore would be ineffective technically. So one way in which they may work is while they are reacting, if they're inside the drain, inside a kind of closed area, they can create some pressure with those bubbles. So that may help. It could be the hot water that's going down. Not sure, but certainly this is not always the solution to a clogged drain. It depends what's clogging the drain. If you've got a lot of hair or something like that, no amount of, uh, you know, this, vinegar and baking soda is gonna remove those hairs. So um, you can try it, but it won't resolve all issues. Um, this is just a little uh, picture I made to demonstrate one of the common errors out there in recipes. You'll see recipes where they're adding um, or mixing Castile soap with vinegar. Even I, I did this actually before I kind of went investigating. I would clean my floors. I'd mix Castile soap because I like that vinegar into my water. Well, you mix the alkaline Castile with the acid vinegar and what you get here is clumping and it doesn't mix very well. So that's a no-no. Uh, whereas if you just take um, other kinds of ordinary dish soap, they tend not to be so alkaline as the Castile soap is and you don't get that clumping. So just don't use recipes where you mix Castile soap with vinegar. Essential oils. These are a wonderful addition for cleaning products. They make it more fun, they make it more effective, and I use them a lot. Essential oils naturally are, you know, have antiseptic, antibacterial, antimicrobial, antifungal properties, because the plants that they come from use these essential oils to deter and, um, and prevent bugs and different microorganisms from destroying them. So they have a lot of those products. Citrus oils are great generally for degreasing. So I use them a ton, lemon, grapefruit, lime, sweet orange, bergamot. Uh, those are very versatile and people tend to love the smell. In the summertime, when I start getting little creepy crawlies in my kitchen, I might add peppermint to my uh, floor cleaning products. Eucalyptus, if it's in the winter and I'm congested. Um, lavender, if I just feel like you know, calm, getting calm. Or tea tree oil is a well-known antiseptic. So you can really use any, especially if you have um, an essential oil that's kind of, maybe it's a bit old and you're not sure if you should be using it on your body. It might not be so fresh or, then you can use it in your cleaning products rather than tossing it out. Uh, do remember that essential oils are highly concentrated. So it takes about 150 of these lemon rinds just to make this one bottle of the uh, lemon essential oil. So you always wanna dilute them, whether it's you know placing something on your skin, which is not what we're talking about tonight, 
or even in your cleaning products. A little bit can go a long way. You don't have to put, there's no you know, specific amounts. Uh, it's not that much of a science. It's a bit of more of a trial and error, but um, you know, in this container that I make, which is quite big, I put about 20 drops of essential oil. All right, so now on to the mostly recipes part. Um, just a few disclaimers. Um, of course, don't disregard specific cleaning instructions for your products or your clothing or your surfaces. Uh, and don't disregard instructions or warnings for your particular models of your washing machine or dishwasher. I don't I know about all of those things that everyone has out there. So um, just when you're using something new, just be mindful of those. And of course, any undesirable results from using recipes shared here or any links is at the user's own risk. But I'm sure for the most part, everyone will be fine. All right, so first thing I wanna show you is a recipe for an all-purpose cleaner. Your all-purpose cleaner, this is your first do no harm. It's going to clean most things. We really don't need to get that fancy. Now, a great all-purpose cleaner is to mix borax, Castile liquid soap, and an essential oil of your choice, or you can mix the two together. So that's a simple recipe for an all-purpose cleaner. You wanna have an all-purpose cleaner. You also need to have a, an all-purpose scouring powder. So this is mine. If you have a, this is a bottle for a spice or something, these kind of bottles that have the, whoops, just poured that on my keyboard, have the little holes in them are great uh, to easily use the powder. So a scouring powder, you can make from baking soda and borax. And again, adding the essential oils is, is always nice. Um, lime is bar none, my favorite of all for cleaning. I just love the smell and it's also a citrus. So once you have a pre-made mixed scouring powder, then all you need to do is take that and mix it with some Castile soap. And then you can make a paste and this is a great general degreaser. And as I've mentioned before, when you're applying something like this degreaser, um, you want it to sit, you want that dwell time after it's sat for 10 minutes or longer, depending on you know, how grimy or greasy the situation is, um, it's, it's going to work much better when you try to remove it than if you apply it and try to remove it right away. This is one of, this is, now, this was my favorite uh, project that I learned to do, which was removing jar labels. Um, so I love to upcycle jars. Firstly, you can soak jars in hot water and sometimes the labels will come off just that way. But if you add some oxygen bleach into that water, it's gonna create those bubbles and then that's really gonna help with the more stubborn labels. Once the labels have come off, so there's always some sticky spots left that can be difficult to get rid of. That's where the um, this paste comes in handy. You mix baking soda with any vegetable oil in equal parts and then sort of paint it on the bottles like you see here. I actually meant to get my laser pointer. Leave it for about 20 minutes and then it just comes off literally like magic. I love this, one of my favorite things. Now, I don't have an automatic dishwasher, but you can make automatic dishwasher powder with uh, washing soda and borax, little essential oil, some citric acid and salt. Um, haven't tried it, so I can't comment on this. Um, some people also, you need to sometimes clean your machine between the cleans. And so that, that way you can use um, baking soda at the bottom and then kind of run the cycle to deodorize it. Countertop care should generally be pretty simple, just your all purpose cleaner, but you may have some stains. So you can use oxygen bleach or hydrogen peroxide. You'll find recipes with either of these to help remove stains, make sure to spot test. And if you want to disinfect your counters, um, rubbing alcohol, is useful and you can mix that with essential oils and a little bit of soap. Um, and that is safe for stone, as far as I know. Oven cleaner, this is what I've always used is the baking soda and making a paste with water. 
leaving it there for a few hours. And then once you come back to it, you spray it with vinegar to get a nice fun reaction and then scrub it away. And it, it seems to work really well. I came across this uh, study on baking soda that um, was actually using baking soda and water to remove pesticides from fruits and vegetables. And in the study, uh, it claimed that it was quite effective at removing the pesticides, um, more effective than, I think it was being compared to vinegar and water or maybe another fruit wash, I can't remember, but here's the, this is from Consumer Reports. You'll have that link as well. You can have a look at it. So now I, sometimes I still soak my food in um, a little bit of a fruit wash that I have, and then I add the baking soda as well. This laundry soap recipe I've been using for a few years and it works really well. It's just a mixture of those powdered soap flakes washing soda and borax. So I buy all of those, um, pre-mix them in a nice big bunch so I can use it for a while. Um, this half a cup uh, mixture, I would say if you have a high efficiency machine, you probably don't need that much. In fact, there's a lot of online recipes. If they're not very current recipes, they probably apply to the days where the washing machines were not high efficiency. And the high efficiency machines don't need as much um, of soap. So kind of cut back, less is more, try uh, reducing the recipe amounts. For static cling, I like to use these Moss Creek um, wool. They're made from merino wool. And I, I have about six of them. I add essential oil drops onto them and then throw them into the drying machine. They are really great for reducing the amount of time you need to dry your clothes. So that makes the process more eco-friendly. They're not as effective as kind of the conventional um, static reducing products that are used for, for static cling. They don't work as well as those, but they work better in terms of reducing the amount of time. And really a, a little bit of static to me is, is no big deal when it comes to um, saving their environment and using natural products. Toilet bowl cleaner, so a simple mix of borax and washing soda works well. If it's a toilet, you might want to, you know, some extra anti-germ action. So tea tree oil would be my essential oil of choice in that case. If you have tough rings around the toilet, a pumice stone, which you can just pick up at any dollar store, works really well. This is a recipe for tub, tile, or grout lines to clean the stains. So making a paste with Castile soap and baking soda. So one part of each of those, then a little bit of essential oil, doesn't have to be lime, but I love the lime. Some hydrogen peroxide, that's an important ingredient for the whitening effect. Um, and, then, and, and then the last important ingredient is once you apply it to let it sit, that dwell time to work. And 10 minutes is, is an estimate. Again, it depends how dirty or stained your floor is. You might want to leave it for an hour or two hours if you're dealing with a, you know, just moved into a place and you've got a sort of a really disaster like situation. Window mirror cleaner, um, vinegar and water, a lot of people already use. So I use the high concentrate. Adding a little cornstarch in can really help prevent the streaks that occur with your cleaning products. And having a essential oil is also a nice addition. Tile and vinyl floor cleaner. So I wash my floor one of two ways, either vinegar and water or Castile soap and water. I try both. I'm not sure which works better. I can't really tell. They both work fine. If you have a hardwood floor though, Oni Castile do not use vinegar on a hardwood floor. And as I mentioned before, don't mix these both together. Vinegar and Castile soap will clump, which is what I used to do. Um, and adding in some essential oils is, is always great, not just for the smell, but again, they're going to be you know, um, antimicrobial. And I, I like to use nature's nature shield, which is a, a ready-made combination that has lots of uh, kind of antimicrobial action to use on my floor. So
So uh, lastly, getting to the end here, um, if you're looking for products to make all of these, there are some uh, two great companies that make a lot of um, clean Canadian products that give you those individual single ingredients you need to make your stuff. Uh, so Simply Clean has soap flakes, baking soda, and washing soda, and it's very eco-friendly, simple packaging. They also make the oxygen bleach powder, and they have the five-time concentrate vinegar. And another company that I use a lot of is the Eco Pioneer. So they have this beautiful, elegant, it's so nice, this bottle for vinegar. It almost seems like you could gift it to somebody. Um, and they also have these lovely eco-friendly packages. They make the citric acid, which is uh, great. Uh, that is a little bit harder to find. So um, they also have the, the pure soap flakes, baking soda, and the borax. Now, all of these um, links here, Elizabeth has, hopefully she's going to paste them into the chat area so that you can um, go and watch some of the many videos. And I went through dozens and dozens of videos that I'm not sharing that weren't great. I've included more in here than I uh, showed you. So there's some videos on getting stains out of clothes that I didn't go through. Um, and included in there again should be the story of the now brand, which is a great to watch. So here's a lot of uh, different videos. So when you buy something, you'll be able to make a lot of use out of it. So thank you everybody for listening and attending tonight. I hope that you learned something to help get you motivated and started uh, with making your own cleaning products. And uh, if there's time, I'm gonna turn to the moderator to see if there's some questions. Uh, actually, oh, I'm seeing the time, there mm -hmm. is time. Yes, we have lots of time for questions. And Talia, you do have a number of questions in the uh, question and answer section. Okay, great, great. So I'm going Excellent. to make my way there and I will try my best. All right. Uh, so what I'm going to do here is, you guys can hold on a second. I'm going to try to get out of my presentation here. Okay, because someone is asking me a question and I know I have the the answer on a slide that I didn't show. <laughs> I didn't think I'd have so much time. Okay, so the first question um, is about how to get stains. And I believe the person's asking me how to get stains out from perspiration. I think that's what's being asked. It says transpiration, but I'm going to assume it means mm -hmm. perspiration. Um, so, a and I did a lot of research on this. A very effective recipe is to take a teaspoon of dishwashing liquid and mix that with four teaspoons of hydrogen peroxide and two tablespoons of baking soda. And I saw the same recipe again and again online. And a lot of people said this is, and you make a paste out of this and rub it with a toothbrush into that area where there's those stains and uh, you know leave it overnight and then wash it. And apparently that works uh, like a charm, so. All right, let's make my way back to the questions here. Okay. Next question. Um, does the solution harm the finish of the shower head from Christine? Um, I, I suppose, Christine, that would depend on what your shower head is made of. So I would uh, you know, check that and, and maybe do a little research online. I know my shower head is stainless steel. So definitely vinegar is fine for stainless steel because we use it as it is to clean the mineral deposits. So um, have a look at that. It's gonna depend what your shower head is made of. Yeah, it's a good question. I did put a list on one slide, I think of 
different types of um, surfaces that vinegar can can destroy. So as I said, always check your own models. Um, what to use for cleaning the dishwasher? I think I've answered that one. Does Healthy Planet carry the spray bottles? Um, I don't think they carry empty spray bottles, but I'm not sure. So what I would do is, is uh, look on their website or call this store or go in. Um, I'm, I'm, not I'm not familiar with all the products. Um, so in terms of purchasing glass bottles and sprayers online, you can get a lot. So, um, and really, you know, I, I went into a recycle bin outside my place and pulled people's old containers. Um, Cause, so I do use some plastic ones are nice and light. The key is if you find a, something that has a really good spray, cause a lot of them malfunction after a while, um, you can upcycle stuff. You don't have to go out and buy it but you should be able to find or dollar stores. Dollar stores will often have uh, empty spray bottles as well. What's the shelf life for these cleaners? Um, that I don't know. You know, I would, uh, that's a good question. I would make, um, the, these are not, um, we don't have industrial strength. Um, we don't have, um, you can't home test the, the uh, shelf life of your own homemade products. Um, wherever you have water, there's the chance for microbes to grow. So something that's mostly water, which most of our cleaning products are. So what I would just encourage you to do is to make small batches that you use up quickly, you know, not giant ones. I've been using stuff for a year and I've never had an issue, but you know, if you use essential oils, there's probably less chance for microbes to grow because they naturally are antimicrobial, but um, you know, short of sending it to a lab, it's really going to depend on how much water, the heat of the water, and all of the different ingredients you use. So just make small batches and, and use them up uh, quickly. Uh, how do you clean white, white kitchen furniture wood? Um, so how do you clean wood? Wood would just be um, the oil um like mineral oil and lemon or so so an acid so you can either mix uh, mineral oil with lemon or you can use lemon essential oil with any oil olive oil that's the kind of common recipe but you want to just make those up in small batches fresh and uh, otherwise it goes rancid mineral oil lasts a lot longer if you're using olive oil which is what i would use i just make it up on the spot when you look online you'll see that recipe of olive oil and citrus and i'm not sure what the exact um ratio is. How would you use the pumice stone for the toilet? So I've never used it, but a colleague of mine on my suggestion used it. She said at a cottage, the, there were these like yellow rings, which were disgusting and it worked very well. So I think you just, you know, you just rub it on. Um, you can look that up on online, but I think it's just, you just simply rub the pumice stone depending on what the inside of your toilet is. I don't know if it will cause scratches or not, but she didn't report anything back. Um, do you know if the bleach and peroxide is safe for my septic system? Unfortunately, I'm not sure about that. So that would be something to check. Um, I don't want to um, cause any issues with your septic system. So I guess just wherever the system comes from, just do a little research on it. Um, what about cleaning frying pans? I guess that depends on the frying pan, but you know, mostly I, I for my frying pans, I use soap and water. If I've got a kind of a big mess of grease, as long as you don't have some kind of coating because you could ruin it, then I would uh, use the baking soda and water. Let it soak for, uh, bring the baking soda and water, bring the oven to a boil, or oh, sorry, the stove turn it down and just kind of let it sit and dwell for about 20 minutes and then usually stuff comes off. Can we use peppermint oil against ants outside? I suppose you can use the peppermint oil inside or outside. There's no reason why, why not. Um, Be a little harder though. Like if you have a certain area outside, maybe where they're coming in uh, under a door, a certain area, you know where they are, you can use the peppermint there. Um, what is safe to use on a sofa? So I'm not 
sure, I guess soap and water should be, depends on your sofa material. Um, soap and water to clean typically, to deodorize baking soda should be fine. Um, it's a question about insects attacking trees. I would do some research. It's going to depend on the tree, different, uh, maybe different essential oils that may be helpful, but it's not something I know off the top of my head. Um, is it okay to use if wool makes me itchy? I guess if you have an allergy to wool, don't use the, the wool balls because I suppose little bits of it may remain on your clothing. In that case, you can buy just natural um, anti-static cloths, like cotton cloths that you can throw in instead. So wool is not the only natural option. Um, let's see. What is best for shower tiles? I think for shower tiles, just basic, like um, just the Castile soap and water. You don't need anything strong for shower tiles. You can use that, uh, rinse it off with water, and then you can spray some uh, vinegar and water as well if you find that you're getting deposits. If you're getting stains in between the, the tiles, the white part, then you can use the recipe I showed you with hydrogen peroxide and baking soda, the paste that you make and treat it once in a while, but otherwise you don't need anything special. Um, that. Elizabeth, I'm just gonna go to eight o'clock, if that's all right. Oh. Yeah, I'm just gonna go till eight o'clock, 10 more minutes. Um, are these food grade hydrogen peroxides? Yes. Sorry, it just takes me a moment to un. un oh, that's okay. Okay. My apologies. Okay, you can just let me know when if. Uh, if Absolutely, I, if that's a really great question. Great. Um, food grade hydrogen peroxide. So the hydrogen peroxide uh, that I use is not food grade. The one I use is what you'd usually get, like the run of the mill three percent hydrogen peroxide. So it's not. You can buy food grade, but you don't need food grade for cleaning. Um, I do have another one that's much, much stronger, but uh, for the hydrogen peroxide for cleaning purposes, 3% is all you need. If you have one that um, maybe you use for other things, that's a much higher percentage, be sure to dilute it uh, down to at least 3% because you you don't want it to be too strong. And with your hydrogen peroxide, an important thing also is it comes in a dark bottle. And the reason for that is because when it's exposed to light, it breaks down very quickly, and then it will be ineffective. So if you're going to pre mix something with hydrogen peroxide and keep it to use later, it should not be in a clear bottle or it won't be effective. So um, thanks for bringing that up. Um, Carla, nice compliment. <laughs> Thank you very much. I won't read out your your whole thing. But uh, Thank you. I'm glad that you enjoyed it. Hope to see you again. Um, Rowena saying, can you show the second page of the learn more links? Uh, so those will all be shared, Rowena, with uh, you uh, from Elizabeth, so you'll have all of yeah. those links, but um, if you want, I can try to, let me see, bring that up again. Malia? Maybe if you, yeah. Malia, I have posted them all in the chat. They oh, okay. are all in the chat. So I think maybe she wants them. to, I think she wants to take a picture of it, I'm assuming. So let me, let me just um, do that for a second. There you go. So if anyone wants to take a picture of this, you can go ahead. All right, back to the Q&A. How do you make a good hand, how do you make a good hand wash for clothing? Not understanding that, sorry. Mm. Answer that. How about homemade toothpaste? Oh, that's a little bit uh, 
I guess cleaning the teeth wasn't something I quite uh, did delve into tonight. Um, there's lots of recipes online for homemade toothpaste. The only caution I would say, and of course people do use baking soda for homemade toothpaste, that's a common use for it. Uh, the only caution is that when you're making your own homemade toothpaste, uh, it could be abrasive. So, you know, depending on how fine the powders are you're using, you can cause damage to your teeth uh, with that. So even though they may work to clean because they're abrasive, that's something to be cautious about. So I, I like to use the natural toothpaste that are already made that I know are safe for my teeth. Uh, what works best for black mold? When it comes to black mold, I would call in the professionals, and that's that's a time when it's it's um, you know the natural products. I wouldn't use them, even when it sometimes apparently looks like the mold is gone because it might change the color. What you apply, it it doesn't necessarily mean it is gone. So because that's so dangerous, I would definitely get it treated professionally. Um, how to deal with dusting? Um, I just use. Uh, a wet rag for dusting because the old dusters, of course, they just send all the dust flying and are not very helpful. Um, microfiber cloths are helpful for dusting, but they're not very environmentally friendly because they are made with plastics that get released into, you know, into our water. So for dusting, maybe the only time that 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 is very helpful. Otherwise, I would use them sparingly and not use them for cleaning in general, but they are unfortunately very helpful for that. Uh, what cleaning recipe would you recommend for laminate floors? So for the laminate floors, I would go with the Castile soap and water. That's all you need. Um, what would we use to brighten white clothing? So that would be the oxygen bleach is going to be um, helpful for the brightening of the white clothes and it won't damage it over time. Uh, what is best to clean hard water stains on the bathroom countertops? Uh, so for the hard water stains, it's going to be your vinegar. And if you're dealing with that issue a lot, then um, this is from Janet, then maybe get the five times concentrate vinegar. You might need a, something a little bit more hefty. Um, and then in terms of cleaning quartz or marble countertops, I don't, I've never had any, but you need to be careful. So you don't want to use vinegar on those. I would just say again, the, just the Castile, the gentle Castile soap and water should work fine on both of those counters. You don't need anything else. Cleaning soap scum off glass shower doors, yuck. <laughs> so soap scum is basically a mixture of dead skin cells and all those mineral deposits uh, and, and other things. So it's kind of icky. All you need really for that is first just to wash with a uh, soap, the gentle soap, Castile to remove the grease. And then part of that is the minerals. Then you can, so you think of uh, as your all purpose cleaner as something that washes away the grease. And then the vinegar cleaner removes the mineral deposits, two separate things. So at first use your soap and water, your Castile, and then follow that with the um, vinegar. And if you get a lot of that soap scum, you know, just always kind of treat with vinegar after you clean. Uh, another question about mold, which I answered. Oh, more questions about mold. Yeah, mold can be very dangerous. Again, get a professional for that. Um, I've tried a lot of natural things when I had a bit of mold and, and nothing worked. So I, I don't, I'm not the expert in that. Uh, what kind of natural options can you use to hand wash clothes? Um, I've hand washed clothes in Castile soap because it's very gentle. That works well. Um, and you can also put in a bit of baking soda. As I mentioned before, baking soda is um, usually washing soda is used in terms of detergent for clothes, but if you want something more gentle, it's finer and a little less harsh than baking soda. So you can use um, that as well. Uh, okay, some more repeats, questions. Oh, a lot of mold issues going on. Um, 
urine stains and smells from clothes or carpets. So in terms of the, from the smell of urine stain or any kind of you know, smell issue, I would go with the baking soda um, or the, you know, washing soda in terms of just getting rid of the smell. You can also add some essential oil into it, leave it on the carpet or whatever it is for, you know, the day or so, and then vacuum it up. Maybe that will help with the smell terms of the stain of urine um i can tell you some resources to check where you can get like uh, information on a, a large variety of stains um so a couple of places to check is let me see here actually if i can find the specific answer to that no if you go to molly made believe it or not molly made website they have a ton of suggestions of natural ways to clean a huge variety of stains. I didn't come across anything specific with regards to uh, urine stains, but I'm sure that they, they have that. Another great website is called the Cleaning Institute, uh, thecleaninginstitute.org. And they also have a long list of different kinds of stains and natural ways to, and I think the links for both of those are um, shared with you as well. Talia, I'm going yep. to jump in now. Oh, okay. We've reached eight o'clock. And so I know people had a lot of really fantastic questions that they wanted to ask. And we would love to have the time to answer everyone's questions because they are really wonderful. We do invite you to please go either to your local Healthy Planet store. Um, and there they have also a lot of really great and helpful staff that um, can help you locate product or perhaps, um, you know, bring you some, some further information. And so please, you know, make sure you copy and uh, paste the chat because we've got those great links there for you. And thank you so much, Talia, for your expertise, knowledge, humor, and wit. Thank you. Thanks, Elizabeth. Thank you everybody for attending. Have a great evening.